Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to episode 88 of Lab Padre SpaceX and Starbase Weekly Updates. Now let's dig in. Starting off this week, early on Friday morning, Ship 32 was stacked onto its mid-lock section in High Bay as the vehicle continues to grow towards its final height. Workers have continued to make steady progress on the Star Factory expansion. With cladding coverage quickly expanding across the front side of the latest edition, it won't be long now before this phase becomes weather tight. On Monday, following a seemingly slow weekend, the top of the structural test cage was lifted and installed at Massey's. This testing structure, formerly known as the Nose Cone Gel, has been cut up and reconfigured in recent months. This will allow it to be reused for different test articles, with its current task being a test of the structural limits of a Starlink payload bay. Nearby, crews continue to make progress on the new warehouse and office building under construction at Massey's. Not only has the steel work for the exterior of the building been completed, but the steel for its mezzanine office space has now also been installed. On the former landing pad, the newly assembled pipe stands have begun being placed in their final location. These stands will run between the existing tank farm and the new tank pedestals that were built in front of the site's main entrance in recent months. Outside the Sanchez site, two more engine compartment purge gas tanks and the fuel sump for a future booster were spotted on their way to the inventory tent. Workers continue to make steady progress on that new wall that is going up around the test stand tank farm. The previously poured concrete wall between the farm and the wetlands is growing taller, while along Highway 4, part of the container wall has been removed and the new concrete wall is being formed. In the early hours of Wednesday morning, the test stand that had been used to hold the hot stage ring whenever it was removed from the booster was returned to the build site, indicating that SpaceX does not intend to remove the section again before launch. Uh, we may have spoken too soon after we saw what happened last night. Anyway, several hours later, the new safety net that had recently been added beneath the orbital launch mount work platform was lowered to the ground and removed. Over on Highway 4, several Border Patrol trucks went racing past the launch site again, heading towards the beach, reminding us that the active rocket facility is just miles from the Mexican border. At the Sanchez site, the Grove GM K7550 crane was connected to the air separation unit's main column as crews continue to disassemble the propellant production facility. It is still not known if SpaceX has scrapped the plans to produce some of their own propellants or if they are simply moving production to another location. That evening, SpaceX appeared to begin a shift towards final launch preparations. At the orbital launch mount, the work platform was lowered from the bottom of the mount onto its waiting transport stand. Then a few hours later, the work platform was not just moved away from the pad, but was rolled onto Highway 4 and taken to the Sanchez site. On Thursday morning, we were treated to a surprising but very welcome sight. Several workers were spotted leaving the explosives bunker, carrying backpacks with explosive placards on them. Given that there has still been no public announcement that SpaceX has received their amended launch license, it is possible that this was a dress rehearsal for the flight termination system team to ensure that they are prepared to perform their work quickly and safely as soon as the launch license is granted. A short time later, those same workers were spotted in man lifts at the flight termination system boxes on both launch vehicles. Given the issues we witnessed with the FTS during the first integrated flight, SpaceX had to make changes to this system. This should ensure that the rockets can be quickly and effectively destroyed if and when the command is sent. Throughout the day and into the evening, the workers were seen working on the upgraded systems before finally closing up the compartments and returning to the ground. As crews were busy working on the flight termination systems of both vehicles, the SpaceX LR-11000 crane was moved away from the orbital launch pad. It came to a rest near Test Stand B, and preparations began for protecting the massive crane during the upcoming launch. A short time later, the crane's outriggers were installed and the crane's boom was laid down across the new parking lot. This is the same location the crane was parked during the last launch and serves to provide the best protection for the expensive piece of equipment as the launch tower now stands between it and the rocket. That evening, the launch site cleanup continued as the Raptor installation platform was picked up by an SPMT and driven out to the launch site. 
It then headed down Highway 4 to join the work platform at Sanchez. Then, late that night, following the completion of the flight termination system's work, the orbital pad was cleared and the chopsticks once again took to the weight of Ship 25. The Starship then made its way up to the tower before being placed back onto Booster 9 and the hot stage ring. As stacking operations were underway on the orbital launch pad, the booster transport stand was rolled out of the launch site and returned to the build site as part of pad cleanup prior to launch. Despite the excitement at the launch site, it was business as usual in High Bay. Ship 32 was removed from the turntable and placed onto a stand to allow the fuel transfer tube to be installed as vehicle production continues at a steady pace. Switching over to Florida, on Friday evening, SpaceX set a new record in reusability. Falcon 9 Booster 1058 launched for the 18th time as part of the Starlink Group 6-26 mission. First thing on Saturday morning, Tug Signet Titan returned to port, towing just read the instructions with Booster 1077 following its launch of the Starlink Group 6-25 mission. Just hours later, the booster was lifted off the deck of the drone ship and ultimately placed onto the dock after an aborted attempt to place it directly onto the stand for processing. By that evening, Signet Titan once again took just read the instructions in tow as they headed back out to sea to support yet another Starlink mission. On Sunday evening, Doug returned to the Port Canaveral docks after successfully recovering both of the fairing halves from the Starlink Group 6-26 mission two days prior. The next morning, Crosby Skipper brought a short follow Gravitas back to port with new Falcon 9 Fleet Leader Booster 1058 as SpaceX's Marine Fleet continues their tireless rotation. That afternoon, having already offloaded the fairing halves, Doug headed back out to Port Canaveral, this time headed to a dry dock in Charleston, South Carolina, likely for maintenance and repair work. Tuesday morning, Falcon 9 Booster 1077's dock site processing was complete and it was lifted off of the stand and laid onto the horizontal transporter for its return to Hangar X for refurbishment. That afternoon, with the dock side now empty, the soot-covered Booster 1058 was lifted off a short follow Gravitas and transferred to the dock to be readied for its turn on the transporter. Just after midnight local time on Wednesday, Booster 1073 lit up the Florida skies as it blasted off from Space Launch Complex 40, carrying yet another batch of Starlinks to low Earth orbit. Early that evening, Tug Crosby Skipper was hooked back up to a short follow Gravitas and towed it out to sea in preparation for the O3B, Empower 5, and 6 launch. On Thursday, Fleet Leader Booster 1058 had its legs stowed and was lifted and laid onto the transporter for its return to Roberts Road to be prepared for flight number 19. That evening, the Florida night sky once again turned to day for the third time in less than a week. Falcon 9 Booster B-1081 launched from Historic Launch Complex 39A and sent Dragon Capsule C-211 on its way to a rendezvous with the International Space Station for the CRS-29 mission. About eight minutes later, the Falcon 9 booster lit up the Port Canaveral skies once again as it performed its landing burn and touched down at the landing zone one. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you next week and thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.